Welcome to The Late Show. I'm your host, Stephen Colbert. And it is... I am so happy to be with all of y'all tonight. It's good not to be alone tonight. Because mm -hmm. it is the one-year anniversary of the January 6th attack on our democracy. And I think it's important that we commemorate and reflect on days like this that so deeply influence the history of this great nation. There's a reason Texas motto is not, what's an Alamo? <laughs> the thing I remember from that day is how shocked I was at this grotesque tragedy. And here's how it went down for us here at The Late Show. That day, we had written a whole monologue about what we thought was going to be the normal procedural vote to certify Joe Biden's electoral win. And I really wish we'd had the chance to do that monologue. Because anyone who works in comedy knows there's no bigger crowd pleaser than procedural certification jokes. <laughs> we had a lot of them. Back then, we, we, weren't, we weren't in the theater, so I was working from home in my home office. And we were meeting in a rewrite Zoom. And it was about 1.45, 1 1.30, something like that. And when we're in that Zoom, we're totally focused. We're locked in on rewriting the script. But we started getting Slack messages from members of my staff who were watching Twitter videos of the carnage. And we were like, don't bother us. We're rewriting tonight's script. And they were like, no. No, <laughs> no I think we're watching tonight's script right now. <laughs> so just about the time the crowd actually breached the walls of the Capitol, we stopped writing for just a moment and turned on the news. And one of my writers, Steve Waltine, took a screenshot of the moment that I first saw what was going on. Take a look. <laughs> that is the actual moment that I saw it. That is the face of a man whose dry January is about to get very wet. <laughs> and true story. It's a true story. That joke, that joke is based on a true story. We <laughs> immediately just tore up the script. Um, uh, I drove into the city while we all figured out what the hell was going on, and by the time I got here, my, my producer Chris over there asked, should we be live tonight? And I was so overwhelmed, I said, I'll tell you what, I'm gonna go to the bathroom, get my bearings, and when I come out, why don't you tell me what we're doing? And when I came out, I said, hey, we're doing a live show tonight. And I said, that sounds like a great idea. <laughs> then about a half hour later, he says, oh, by the way, every advertiser is pulled out, so you will be live and the camera will never cut away from you for an hour. <laughs> and I said, fantastic. <laughs> but can I change it? I can't. I love it. But at the last minute, we got new sponsors, so I'd like to salute the true heroes of January 6, 2021, CBS Ad Sales. <laughs> ba -da -ba -ba -da. I'm loving them. Now, one person who clearly has not forgotten the shock and horror of that day is Joe Biden. And President Biden went to the Capitol this morning to mark the first anniversary and asked all of us to relive January 6th. Close your eyes. Go back to that day. What do you see? Bourbon. <laughs> then he reminded us in graphic detail about what we can never forget. We saw with our own eyes, rioters menaced these halls, threatening the life of the Speaker of the House, literally erecting gallows to hang the Vice President of the United States of America, destroying property, literally defecating in the hallways. Defecating. That is a very delicate, presidential, and high-minded way to describe MAGA maniacs smearing poop on the walls. <laughs> These ignoble miscreants absconded with Madam Speaker's rostrum, set alight their cannabis cigarillos, and besmirched these hallowed corridors with their human detritus. The fecal matter, the fecal matter had truly hit the oscillator. <laughs> then... I say, I say to you, sir... <laughs> then Biden turned his attention to the actions, or more accurately the inactions of his predecessor during the riot. What did we not see? We didn't see a former president who had just rallied the mob to attack, sitting in the private dining room off the Oval Office in the White House, watching it all on television and doing nothing for hours. Excuse me, sir. Since when is downing a KFC family bucket doing nothing? <laughs> 
He was working hard, and he had the chicken sweats to prove it. <laughs> then Joe took the gloves off. The former president of the United States of America has created and spread a web of lies about the 2020 election. He's done so because he values power over principle, because he sees his own interest as more important than his country's interest, than America's interest. And because his bruised ego matters more to him than our democracy or our Constitution, he can't accept he lost, even though that's what 93 United States senators, his own attorney general, his own vice president, governors and state officials in every battleground state have all said he lost. Hell yes! Tell it like it is, Joe! Come on! So simple, so true. That's it. I love it. I love that speech today. Truly a powerful speech. That is the Joe Biden I remember. That is the Joe Biden we stole this election for. I mean, voted for. I mean... Oh, sure. <laughs> I've said too much. Biden finished with a powerful call to action. So now let's step up, write the next chapter in American history, where January 6th marks not the end of democracy, but the beginning of a renaissance of liberty and fair play. I did not seek this fight brought to this Capitol one year ago today, <clears throat> but I will not shrink from it either. Come on, I'll fight you, leprechaun style. Come on! <laughs> I tell you. I tell you. No. Say hello to my two friends, Liberty and Fair Play. I'm gonna beat the defecation out of you. <laughs> now, predictably, Predictably, Biden's speech prompted a response from former President Dubious Caesar. <laughs> now, uh, if you watch the show, you know I no longer do an impression of that ding-a-ling, uh, and not just because I can't stand the taste of that man's words in my mouth, but because there's someone who more accurately embodies his mental capacity. And that's a seven-year-old. That's why we hired one to read the former president's <laughs> actual response. Biden, who is destroying our nation with insane policies of open borders, corrupt elections, disastrous energy policies, unconstitutional mandates, and devastating school closures, used my name today to try to further divide America. No, he didn't. He didn't use your name once, you nimrod. <laughs> Listen to this. Former president, the 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 former president. He's not just a former president. He's a defeated former president. <laughs> so he didn't use his name, but Biden did make one direct reference to the former president. Nazi. <laughs> now, there were some notable absences from the ceremonies today during a moving moment of silence for the officers who lost their lives. There were only two Republicans on the House floor. The other Republican legislators chose to reenact January 6th by hiding in fear. Former administration officials did show their faces on Fox News, like former White House chief of staff and guy who dilated his pupils just for the free optometrist shades, <laughs> Mark Meadows. Meadows went on his Buddy Hannity show, and instead of discussing their now public, pants-crapping, terrified text exchange from a year back, Meadows complained in advance about how the media would cover it. You're right to point out uh, that uh, tomorrow is going to be spent on January 6th. Keen analysis. <laughs> Meadows went on to predict the next day would be spent on January 7th. The day after might focus on January 8th, and by the weekend, we could see numbers as high as 9 or 10. <laughs> In the, uh... Kidneys, Doc. Kidneys. 
The January 6th Select Committee is hard at work investigating the riot. Yesterday, they spoke to a former White House press secretary and murderous Anne Klein mannequin, <laughs> Stephanie Grisham. And today, Grisham told CNN she was helping the committee flesh out the details of January 6th. There were a couple of things that they didn't know. Uh, there were things that I was able to confirm, and I think there were things that I was able to kind of help put together uh, like a puzzle. Yes, it's a puzzle. In this case, Sudoku. <laughs> we got a great show for you tonight. My guest is John Dickerson from CBS News. Stick around.